there's another scenario here that's light, 3-bet, and 4-bets. Light, 3-betting, and 4-betting, um, for those of you who are relatively new to the game, or maybe you've heard the term, or you've read it somewhere, it in no way means bet size. So a light 3-bet is not when you bet just two times the, the open raise instead of three times plus one per cold caller, for example. A light 3-bet is when you 3-bet with a broader range of hands. So that means you're not only 3-betting with, you know, say you're super tight, nitty <laughs> uh, player, and you only 3-bet with queens, kings, or aces. Pre-flop. Okay, light 3-betting would then be broadening that up. Um, maybe 3-betting with you know, suited connectors, mid pairs, um, any suited ace to be crazy, whatever, changing it up. Betting light doesn't mean making a smaller bet size. It means betting with the broader range. And that's the same, of course, for a four bet. Uh, just to give you guys, uh, yeah, general information on what that actually, uh, what that term actually means. So here we've got, uh, uh, yeah, bluffs, post flop. It's again donk bets, uh, these so called stop and goes betting into the pre-flop aggressor before he has a chance to make a move. C-bets can be value bets, and they can be bluff bets. Uh, raises and re-raises, check raises, bluffs, floating, etc. Floating we'll get to here shortly. Um, Semi-bluffs. Semi-bluff is when you make a bet on any given post-flop street. When you don't have a made hand, but you do have many outs, or at least some outs. It's so-called semi-bluff. So it means you're betting into a pot where you don't have a made hand, but you have a lot of potential to complete. So you've got both fold equity and your draw on your side. Fold equity is, again, guys, just the probability that your opponents will fold and you take down the pot uncontested. All right, here I've got always be mindful of the villain's ability to fold when you're semi bluffing. That means if you know it's a if you know it's a calling station, don't be semi bluffing into him, especially when you're in position. Just take the free card. If it's a calling station, he's going to pay out the nose whenever you do hit. So let him do that. You know you can you know again change it up skillfully. Definitely do, but don't always semi bluff, right? Don't always not semi bluff. Be yeah, be mindful. Uh, adjust your play according to your opponents, and that's that's how you do that. And again, here I would say the semi bluffs. When you're making your semi bluffs, make them exactly the same as when you got your big hands. Make them exactly the same as when you got your bluffs. Make them exactly the same size as any other play, and you're most utterly impossible to read based on bet sizing. And again, I've got here half pot to two thirds pot size. Um, yeah, again, based on the connectivity and um, suitedness of the board. Floating. Another huge topic. <laughs> uh, at least three, four videos worth. And it is as follows. Um, we have an example here. Let's say you, you, you open raise to four in middle position. The uh, cutoff re-raises you um, to 12 and you call the eight. Right? Uh, coming into the flop. Flop comes and you flop either a huge hand or a very weak hand. Doesn't matter. Floating is a positional move. Much like um, stealing, it's not what the, the name necessarily implies. It, floating is not necessarily a bluff, contrary to popular belief. Floating is a post flop positional move. Same with steals being a pre flop positional move. You can steal with aces, you can steal with 2-7. Right? You can float with aces, you can float with sets, you can float with nothing. It doesn't matter. It's a definition of a move. So an example of floating would then be you open to 4. Somebody 3-bets you. You call it for 8, and you see the flop. You check call the flop, C-bet. Okay, in that case, OOP. <laughs> um, turn comes, and you bet into him if you're out of position, or then you raise him when you're in position, say, on the turn. Check calling the flop out of position and then betting into the pre-flop aggressor on the turn. Donking the turn, i.e. Um, another idea is then checking behind on the flop when you're in position. All right, same scenario. Uh, let's say somebody before you uh, raises to four, you three bet him to 12, he calls it. 
um, the initial raiser checks the flop and you check behind. Guy then bets the turn and you just call it. And then you're going to bet and raise the river all the way in. Uh, I've listed here in red again half to two thirds pot. You, depending on the on the pain levels of your opponents, depending on the situation where you are, uh, you need to vary that up. But just be sure that you're doing similar amounts with your big hands, with your draws, and with your bluffs. That's the principle. All right, it makes you unreadable. Um, you don't need to go hauling off, you know, seven big blinds when you wake up with aces as an open raise. <laughs> you don't need to be, you know, pushing every time that you, you flop a monster. Um, you know, these, these are all real novice mistakes that you need to get out of your system. You want to be consistent, and you only want to deviate skillfully and against certain opponents in certain situations. Very good. Block bets. Very last point um, before we get into uh, the second video. Uh, block bets is just betting small to avoid having to fold to a larger bet. Uh, especially you do this when you're out of position. Yeah, you've made your open raise. Okay, to four. You get three bet. Uh, call it. See the flop out of position, which is not necessarily a good idea, um, by the way, um, in most playing scenarios. But let's say for some reason you do. Um, and you flop the... Um, you flop uh, two pair. Whatever. Uh, you called it down with, um, for some crazy reason, um, yeah, suited connectors, and you flop two pair. Good. Play continues. Um, flop and turn, you know, relatively small uh, bet size. And let's say uh, your opponent in position is only betting like half pot, something like that, even less. And you get to the river. You're out of position. And the flush thing completes. Let's say there's three clubs on board, and you still got your unimproved two pair. Good. You, at a position, might decide to bet one third to half the pot into your opponent in order not to check and then be pushed off your two pair hand on a pure bluff if your opponent decides then to represent that he's completed his flush. That's the idea of a block bet. Um, and very often, I mean, a block bet is, um, it's a bet you make, for example, with the vulnerable hand um, that you think is good, um, potentially, but if you are making these block bets and you're getting con continually or perpetually raised, right, you need to start making your block bets um, as yeah, really sound bets, actually. So you can make these block bets that look like block bets that are actually value bets, uh, are actually locks. That means when you've... Um, when you've got a sure win, when you've got the nuts or, or close to it, um, you can make these block bet looking moves, right? Uh, and especially if aggressive opponents um, and very savvy opponents, they'll be raising a lot of you know third you know third pot size bets just on principle. Um, but the idea of a block bet is again you know betting kind of small in order to avoid having to to fold to uh, a larger bet when out of position. That's more or less how that works out. Yo guys, uh, that was actually quite a lot for one video. Um, we're already at an hour and a half, I think, here, close to it. And for that reason, I just want to show one example hand. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to get the second video in and have this whole section wrapped up in two videos. But yeah, we'll just look at one or maybe two or three uh, example hands that really cover in detail preflop play. Uh, we'll not look at squeezes at this point, but... Um, maybe quite a few of these other concepts.